Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. I am so excited to be doing today's video because I'm announcing my, I'm formally announcing my brush collection with Sigma. I mean, you guys already know the tea about the brush collection, but I've just never like formally done a dedicated video to it. And yeah, I got to create a five piece Jackie Ina favorites brush set. I'm filming this video and I'm putting it up today because this brush kit launches tomorrow. It launches tomorrow, March 20th. Is it March? How in the hell is it already almost April? How? Today I'm gonna be showing you how I get this look with five of some of my favorite brushes from Sigma. Just a little bit of fun background info on how this whole collaboration came to part. So I went to Minnesota to visit the Sigma headquarters and I brought, naturally, I brought some of my favorite Sigma brushes with me on that trip. The night that I landed there, I was on Snapchat and I was like, hey guys, I'm here with Sigma, we kicking it and whatever. I was like, I just wanted to share with you guys what some of my favorite Sigma brushes are. I just naturally was like, these are the brushes I love. I've been a Sigma affiliate for about two and a half years now or something like that. Even though I've been an affiliate for quite some time now, I was still buying my stuff. I have like almost 10, I have almost 10 each of some of these brushes that like over time I just keep buying and keep buying because it's just good to have like repeats of your favorite brushes so you don't have to keep cleaning them over and over again. And naturally when you like something, you keep buying it. So they literally were like, we'd love to make this collection. And I was like, um, yeah girl. I'm so excited to be able to finally share this with you guys. I think it's kind of fun like having my picture on a box. She cute though, whatever. So the kit, like I said, includes five brushes, my top five. So my holy grails from Sigma, you get the flat Kabuki, the F80. I think it probably goes without saying, this is probably, if I had to guess, Sigma's like number one brush. Like, if not number one, probably in their top five. And it's popular for a reason, okay? It is like one of the best foundation brushes on the market, especially for like really dense, cream products or like stick products. You'll get the tapered highlight, the F35. I have literally retired from all other highlight brushes ever since I started using this one. Funny enough, my last video, a lot of people were saying, I feel like my highlight never looks right. That could be not only the product that you're using, but it actually might have a lot to do with the brush that you're using because believe it or not, guys, I still have like faux pas with makeup. I still, you know, make mistakes and I still learn things. And I just learned that in order for my highlight to look really, really good, especially on my face shape, it's just best for me to use a teardrop shaped brush. I just get the best application. It's foolproof and it doesn't look sloppy or like all over the place. The diffuse crease, the E38, this was like a late bloomer that I started using and I was like, yo, hold up. This brush is kind of lit though. Because what I would use sometimes when I would blend out my eyeshadows, I would use like a tighter, more dense brush in the outer V area. And then for my crease, I would use something that's a bit more fluffy. This brush for me does what originally two brushes were doing for me. So it does like literally two to three jobs at once. And then I can also use it along the bottom lash line. If you need like light applications of color on the lid, you can sweep things on. If you only wanted to spend money on one blending brush, in my honest opinion, it would be this one. You can get so many uses out of this one and it works on pretty much all eye shapes. The short shader E20 like saved my life when I discovered how lit it was along the bottom lash line. It doesn't get too sloppy. I can get like really precise, but also very um, blended out applications of, sh why do I like to like do the motion while I'm explaining the brush? I don't know, I'm extra. But anyway, I like getting really diffused and also precise applications of color along my bottom lash line. And whenever I apply pencil liner on the top, whenever I need like a smoky smudgy look, I'm going for this brush right here. It just gives you the perfect amount of smudge and smokiness. I can find a couple different ways to get use out of this brush. And then the last brush for my kit is the E68. This is the Lime Perfector. I have one use and one use for this brush only. And that is, tracing that brow girl i might be the only person still doing it i don't care i just love the fact that it picks up quite a bit of concealer and product on here and it just gets the job done quickly it's not flimsy at all get the job done and that's just what i'm looking for my brushes you can also of course use this for like cream gel liners but i'm not really a fan of cream gel liners but if you wanted to obviously get use out of it for that as well you could totally do that with this. That in a nutshell is pretty much all of the brushes that you will get in my set. Again, it launches tomorrow, March 20th on the Sigma Beauty website. Right now, it's still in the pre-order phase, so you can actually sign up on the link that I'm gonna put in the description box 
on the wait list, but you won't have to wait for very long since it launches tomorrow. You get all of these brushes for $69. You basically save $30 on what you would have paid for each brush individually. And then on top of that, because I'm a Sigma affiliate, but you don't have to necessarily use my coupon code. You can use anybody else's. You'll still get an additional 10% on top of that. So really what you end up paying is My math is not my strong suit. That's why I stick to makeup. So 10% off knocks an additional six bucks off of the brush set. And just a heads up, the coupon code does not just apply to the kit. If you wanted to throw more stuff in your cart though, you would still get a discount off of that. Not saying that you have to or you should, but um, I did get a couple questions about that and the coupon code lives on forever. I've had it for years and I just wanted to be able to let you guys know you can still knock a couple dollars off of it though, you feel me? Okay, so anyway, I've rambled enough. I'm gonna be showing you how to get this makeup look using my brushes from my Jackie Anna favorite set. I'm so proud of this and I'm actually like, Really shocked at how many people have already signed up on this wait list. And I just wanted to say thank you guys for not only continuously supporting my channel, but everything that I create, everything that I recommend, endorse, like put my stamp of approval on. You guys are always there backing me up like, yep, Jackie Anna said it, it's lit, I tried it, fam. Like just for the support in general, I'm so thankful and so grateful. And I really, really hope that you guys enjoy the brush set as much as I do, not only using it, but now creating this for you guys. Oh, and if you're wondering if it ships internationally, it absolutely does. Everything from Sigma.com ships internationally. And if you are not already subscribed to the Jackie Ina family, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and uh, see to it that you get more flea activities in your near future. <laughs> please subscribe if you like what you see and um, let's go ahead and get started. I have no idea what I'm doing with today's face. I'm gonna show you guys how I get my pine Pineapple today. My pineapple is my updo where the hair is shitting basically. So basically, you get to start up the curly hair. Boom! This is just a situation that's very bootleg, and I know there are different alternatives to this, but I like it. It's a stretchy band that I cut two of them and I tied them together, so it's really, really long. It's really long and it's stretchable, right? I start off with my gel. This is the Gotta Be Ultra Glued. I start off with that, and I've lately been using this gel for my edges and my hairline because. I feel like it's a lot more forgiving than the Lagoon Jam. Now, I do not like using brushes or anything on my hairline just because I just try not to get into the habit of that. I don't want to suffer from any breakage. So I just rub this in with my hands. And even though I don't get that perfect edge look per se, I still have healthy hair. And that's just the most important thing to me. And then I'm also gonna do it along the back so we can have nice, Slick hairline. And I take my stretchy band starting from the back and I'm gonna start wrapping it around my hairline whilst also drawing it upward while also pushing it forward to draw the hair upward. So I'm just gonna squeeze. I'm also cheating with my hands. You don't want your hair getting caught or snagged in this so it's easier to remove with the bow instead of double knotting. So now that's nice and tight, the hair sits up. Now you'll see a little bit of flatness when you first do this, but as the hair dries, I'll go in with a pick and fluff that out. Not too worried about it right now. Next thing you'll need is your little silk headband. And before I tie that down for my edges, I'm gonna put just a teensy bit more gel, just so that I get like the little, little stubborn hairs. That's why most of the time you guys see me film and I'm wearing this, it's because I'm letting it do its, you know, because I'm letting it do its little, little thing. Okay, so that's that for the pineapple. Just gonna let this dry and then get into the makeup. So today's look, I think I'm going for, I don't even know how the hell I'm gonna do my makeup today. I'm just gonna go with it. I'm just gonna wing it. I've already primed, so I'm gonna start off with foundation. I'm taking my Taunt Edol Stick Foundation from Lancome and I'm just going to place that on my face first. Stick foundations though can be hard to blend out if you don't have the right brush. I'm gonna be using my F80 to blend that out. This is in my opinion the best foundation brush on the market for blending cream products. Now I can use this for liquid foundations once it's been worn out a little bit more because I find it a little too dense for me just for my personal preference for liquid but for stick, oh, 
uh, stick and cream, like you literally just dab it in there, pop it right on your face and it blends out like a dream. Like it just does not miss a single spot. Like I said, I have other favorites for liquids, but for creams and, and stick foundations, this brush is just all the way for me. The one that I'm using has a little bit of wear into it. So as you start using it more, the bristles kind of spread out a bit more. And so it's a little bit more, in my opinion, a little bit more versatile, you know? I stipple that in as opposed to like swiping. I don't usually name each brush that I use, but today I am because um, some of these brushes I don't typically use or reach for and I've been trying them lately and I've been like, so this is the 3D HD Precision. This is one of those brushes that I thought, eh, probably won't use too much until I started using the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. And it's literally kind of, it's got a V shape. I don't want to like give you a close up of this because it is so janky. I like this a lot better for cream applications in small areas. It's amazing for under eye concealer, amazing. If you're new here, don't freak out. I am one of those people who likes to let the under eye concealer dry a little bit. In my opinion, it gives the best coverage. And here we go. Do you see what I just did with that? Oh, I love this brush. This brush, unfortunately, is not in my set, but I just wanted to share with you guys another brush that I've been getting a lot of use out of because I really genuinely like I've used all my backups too. They all look crazy now. For my contour, I'm gonna take my Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation in the color Espresso and do the dots. I just do the dots. I am going out tonight, so your girl needs to be contoured. And I'm filming this video and putting it up today. If you've tried the new Sigma Beauty Sponge, please let me know. I have not tried it. Now, usually with my Beauty Blender, this is the step where I kind of go in and pick up wherever the foundation brush left off but because the F80 is so dense I really don't even have to do that like I just go straight into the concealer and contour and I don't need to like fix other areas as much as I usually do with other foundation brushes okay now I'm gonna set this off with my Laura Mercier Powza which I've been loving lately I'm gonna put a nice amount under eye to catch any fallout actually we're gonna be using glitter and pigment let me put a little bit extra Fill my brows like I normally do with um, Goof Proof Brow Pencil from Benefit in shade number four. And then I also used Granite from Anastasia just to kind of like define them first and then fill them in with Goof Proof Brow. I'm probably the only person in the world who still uses concealer under brows, but you know what, don't judge me. I'm gonna take a Monde Concealer from NARS. I love this concealer for under my brows. But what I love even more is the E68 Line Perfector because I think what I like about this brush is the fact that it's so kind of, it's so wide. It covers more surface area than most angled brow brushes. So I've just been using this one for a while and haven't really touched anything else for that carving out of the brow step. I only do this along the bottom. It just kind of gets the job done really quickly and it just does it right. And now I'm taking a little bit of my Ready Set Brow Brow Gel and set them brows sculpted meets lived in look and the brow gel definitely gives that for the shadow we're going to be using i'm priming my lids with the radiant creamy concealer in cafe now my baby the diffused crease e38 i'm gonna take my pastel goth i don't know what like i've just been like reaching for this palette more lately especially for my more fun colorful looks this is kind of a banger though like i'm not mad at it so i'm gonna take this bright yellow haven't done anything with yellow in a long long time and i'm going to be blending that into my crease first by dabbing it into my skin and then swiping it now because these colors are so matte i'm probably gonna have to build i've never worked with this yellow before i've only used like the purple and other colors in this palette Ooh, it looks so good you guys tell me you want me to switch it up more use more bright colors i hear you i'm with it and just trying to get re-inspired, you know? What I like about this crease brush is, to me, it's probably one of the more versatile blending brushes for all eye shapes. It gets big eyes, smaller eyes, medium shaped eyes. It's not too fluffy and it's not too spread out. Blend Olympics contest, girl, you in first place. I'm gonna take Jackpot Pigment from Makeup Geek and it's just a bright yellow. With a wet brush, I'm popping that onto my lid. I'm also gonna take this yellow glitter from Beauty Bakery, their sprinkles glitter. 
in the color gold. I'm also gonna use their sprinkles glue. I know I probably could have skipped on using the pigment, but you know, I like to be extra. Oh, there's like a lot happening with this eye look, but I'm not bad at it also. I'm gonna go back to that yellow and use my E20 short shader from my collection. This brush right here gives me really precise under eye application. You can even use the brush vertically when you want a little bit more smokiness and still get that smudgy look without it getting too carried away because sometimes it begins too carried away. Can I just say I'm really glad my favorite pair of lashes, I finally tracked down the name. I got the Page Lash from Flutter Lashes a couple months ago and I've really been hooked, but the name's not on the box. So I figured it out. I just did a comparison and I figured out that it is Paige. And my tip is if you buy Flutter Lashes, don't throw away the sleeve because they put the name of the lash on the sleeve. Flutter Lashes, I'm gonna need y'all to put it on the box, okay? Because we always throw away the sleeve. Okay, thank you. Now I have to work like extra hard to get these lashes like black, black, black to get all of the yellow like glitter off of them and the Colossal Big Shot mascara is just doing it for me right now. While I've got that glue drying, I'm also gonna go in with my diffuse crease brush because like I told you, you can use this for all kinds of different eye shapes and I'm also just adding a little bit more yellow along that bottom lash line. I'm gonna be getting all creative and junk today. And now that I've actually found out what the name of this lash is, you know I went back and bought like 10, right? You know I did. And now it's powder time, powder time. I don't think I'm gonna wear blush, but I am gonna bronze for sure. I'm using my Tom Ford bronzer brush, the Bobbi Brown Deep Bronzer. As you can see, this, this look is obviously very warm, very yellow, and I just felt like bronzing would be the most appropriate thing to do. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Maybelline Master Stroke Liquid. I freaking love this stuff. I'm gonna be taking my Tapered Highlight, my F35 brush. Before I started using this one from Sigma, I was using one from a company called Stelazi, but it was always sold out. Maybe they discontinued it. I don't know. But I found this one and I'm like, okay, finally a brush that is like always in stock. This really gets in there and lets me blend and blend and blend without it being streaky, you know? I'm also going to take a bit of that highlight into my fort. <laughs> okay. That was the perfect color for this overall yellow look. Last thing we're going to do is add our lip and it's going to be black. This is from Beauty Bakery. It's the color Midnight Truffles. And lately a cool thing I've been doing with my lips, let me not apply and talk at the same time with this black color. I've been like going over my cupid's bow, not around it. So I don't even feel like I just draw a straight line over it. And that's it. Once my face is done, I go back to the hair. I always have to tweak it a little bit. All you need is a good old fashioned pick. Um, I just got this from like any old beauty supply store and you'll notice how it's flat at the top This is considered like first day hair. I just wash my hair I get really really good volume after like second day third day fourth day hair So first day hair you got to kind of manipulate it a little bit All I'm doing is taking my pick and combing it at the root and my hair is still a little bit damp This is actually something you should do when it's like fully dry because you get more volume and in order for me to keep the ends really defined and nice and crisp, only make sure you touch those roots. And uh, that's it. I'm just gonna chill here for your viewing pleasure while you enjoy my previous uploads. Go ahead, enjoy, have at it. Subscribe and you way out. Is this awkward? It's, it's weird for me, it's weird for me too. I know, I know, I know, just, just go with it, it's cool.